okay the first adventure is how do i flush the toilet <laughs> hello everybody this is ro welcome to the tequila princess channel so today is a story time i want to tell you a story that was kind of promised on the first video my trip to london my nightmarish trip to london the story is kind of long but i will do my best to tell it as short and to the point as possible although that's gonna be really hard <laughs> everything started in 2006 i wanted to celebrate my 21st birthday in a special way so i had been saving money for a little while and also a friend of the family had a nephew that was living in london his name is Beto, and uh, also uh, an uncle, he works at an American airline and he can help me get some standby tickets, employee tickets, which means that if someone doesn't show up to the flight or the flight is not completely booked, I get to fly in there for a cheaper price. So everything was coming along and that was perfect. I was so thrilled because this was the first time that I was going to be traveling by myself and i was excited it was just great the first thing that surprised me was that beto told me how to get to his house from the airport on the subway and i was used to everybody picking me up to everywhere or me driving so it was like oh i have to get there on my own yeah that's kind of logical he doesn't even know me it was kind of doing like a couch surfing but without the platform <laughs> so i got there i got on the subway and i followed the instructions and got to his place and he showed me around the city the first few days were just awesome i was just walking by the river window shopping everywhere buying a few souvenirs i went to many of the touristical places i was focusing more on museums because i loved that and i didn't have anyone to complain about me spending hours in there so i was happy i was thrilled and i also loved tea so i was fascinated with all these tea shops everywhere i was in heaven i went obviously to most of the places that are iconic you know like the big ben and the london bridge and of course, I went to the London Eye. You know that I am terrified of heights. I told you before when we were talking about amazing places in Mexico. If you don't know what that is, it's like a giant fortune wheel, but with small crystal pots that look like a bubble. And it's super high. I don't know how tall it is, but it's high. So when you're right on the top, you get a beautiful amazing view of the whole city when i went there someone told me that it was preferable to go as late as possible because during summer the sun sets around 9 pm the later the better because you will get to see the view of the golden hour and i had to handle my fear but it was it was okay it was manageable i was so excited that it was definitely easy to control <laughs> So after a few days walking around, going to places and doing things, I find out that you could go from London to Paris by subway. And I was like, oh, maybe I should go because I'm so close and I mean, it's Paris. I should go, right? And when I went back to the house, their French roommate was at home. So I asked her, do you think if I go to Paris without a hotel reservation at this time of year, Remember, July, summer. Do you think it will be hard to get a place to stay? And she was like, mm, no, I don't think so. There are many hotels. I'm pretty sure you will find something. So I thought, I have my purse. I just need a change of clothing and then this and that. And I was like, it's easier if I just grab my whole backpack, which was actually like a school backpack, <laughs> tiny, and leave the purse. Like, I don't need to carry with all my stuff. It's easier. So I just grabbed my backpack my passport, the American Express card that my sister got as an additional for me so that I could use during my trip and I headed to the train station. I got there, I got my tickets and I jumped into the train with nothing prepared or planned for Paris, just knowing that it was gonna be my birthday and I wanted to go to Paris. <laughs> 
Oh boy, when I got there, it was about 7.30 in the afternoon, I think. I was hungry and I wanted to buy something from one of the coin machines for food, uh, spending machines, I don't know. I didn't have my wallet. Genius me took the backpack and not the purse, but didn't took the things that were inside of the purse to the backpack. So I only had my passport and the American Express, but no cash. Yeah, genius. <laughs> That was a huge mistake. And also, well, I didn't speak French at the time, so communication was an issue. Long story short, I found someone, someone to direct me to the East Station so that I could find a hotel because they told me there were more options over there. I arrived to the North, I think, to the North Station. So I, I arrived there and I saw many hotels, but most of them said no vacancy. And I was like, Oh, okay, so everything is pretty full. And the few ones that I found that had vacancy, I told them that I had an American Express card. They didn't accept my card. <sighs> it was frustrating and hard. I just started walking from place to place trying to find accommodation and I couldn't find anything. And most people didn't even speak English. So <sighs> it was so frustrating. At some point, I remember I was exactly in a corner. I was starting to feel so desperate because I couldn't think of a solution. I didn't know at the time that you could go back and sleep at that train station and that was a safe place. I didn't know that. I have to admit, I didn't do any kind of research before going to Europe. So I didn't know anything about traveling on my own. So I was there in the corner feeling lost, feeling frustrated because I felt stupid because I made a huge mistake. I remember I started praying, like literally praying. I just started praying to St. Michael Archangel because that's the one that we here at home um, feel closer to, him and the Virgin of Guadalupe. Please, please, please help me find a place to stay. I don't wanna sleep on the streets. That's gonna be dangerous and weird and uh, just please help me out, please. So I just took, one of the four directions, I don't even remember which one, and I found this small hotel. I saw that it said no vacancy, but something told me to do, to go there. So I approached there and I saw a guy in the in the lobby and from the door I asked him if he spoke English and he said yes. Oh, finally, because <laughs> almost nobody did. That was a, That was surprising for me. I was thinking that every touristical place had a bunch of people who spoke English. I, I've learned that the French didn't like English, but I thought that they didn't like it, not that they didn't speak it. So whatever, I went in there and, and I told him, I know you don't have vacancy, I, I saw that outside, but I was wondering if you know, where can I find a place that has vacancy and that they take American Express because I'm having a hard time finding a place to sleep? And uh, he was like, oh sure, let me see. So he pulled out his computer and he started typing and he started checking. Ooh, it looks really hard. Like everything looks super booked. No, please don't tell me that. I don't want to sleep on the streets. He told me everything you want is a place to sleep. In my desperation, I couldn't even think of anything else. I was like, yeah, obviously that's everything I need. Um, and he told me, well, because I am during the night shift, they give me a mattress that I can use here on the lobby. If you want, you could stay here, no problem. <gasps> really? Yeah, sure, you just have to come back after 11 because my supervisor will come in and, uh, and you will have to leave very early in the morning before the next supervisor comes and checks. I was like, yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, whatever, I, I will leave six in the morning if you want. He was like, actually, it has to be a little bit before that because they come at six. Yeah, 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 sure, no problem. Ah, oh, thanks God, you're my savior. It was already past nine. So I was feeling like really desperate. I didn't think of all the dangerous things that can happen in the world to a woman. So I came back and he already had the mattress out and he pointed me to the restrooms that I could use for brush my feet and, you know, whatever I wanted to do. And he told me, yeah, here is the mattress and um, I hope you don't mind. The shift is kind of long and I might lay uh, next to you at some point. I was like, yeah, sure. What? I didn't realize what I was exposing myself to. I was so desperate not to sleep on the streets. 
that it didn't even occur to me that a man was offering me to sleep there and I didn't know him. It just dawned on me the danger that I was exposing myself. In that time I used to I used contact lenses still. I went to the bathroom to refresh a little and I decided to sleep on my clothing. My shoes on, my contact lenses on, everything in case I just needed to, you know, make a run for it. The night passed and thanks God, he was the perfect gentleman. He didn't touch me, he didn't even was close to me. The moment that he touched the mattress, he was snoring, like dead. But anyway, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I slept a little bit, but I was mostly just thinking, don't touch me, don't come close to me, don't even try anything. <laughs> I was so paranoid, with good reason, but anyway, uh, nothing happened. But I did learn a big lesson. Never ever do something without planning at least the most basic things, like having money, having food, or a way of getting it and accommodation. That should be guaranteed before you do anything. At least I think that's how it should be. If I had known couch surfing back then, things would have been much different for me. I would have found someone to host me before going there. But I didn't and I ended up putting myself at risk unnecessarily. But thanks God, this guy was such a good person and he did absolutely nothing to me but saving me from sleeping on the street. Okay, so next day I left and I was thinking that the easiest way to get to see all Paris in just one day, I decided to take the tour bus. I was thinking, where can I go that I am sure the tour bus will stop there and I most likely will be able to get on it? And I thought, Notre Dame. So I went into the subway and the first problem was that everything was in French and well here in Mexico machines are very different for getting a ticket to the subway. I saw some cylinders and I didn't understand anything. I couldn't even understand an option for changing language or something. So I was just like trying to figure out how to work the machine when a couple kids approached me asked me with signs where I was going. So I showed them in the map, Notre Dame, and they did something in the machine, showed me how much it was. I put on my card, because I could pay with card, and I uh, got my ticket and I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't know if they were expecting some sort of tip, but it looked like they only helped me out of the goodness of their hearts. <laughs> So I got to Notre Dame and I found like a bus stop or something where it says that the tour bus will stop. So I was sitting there, very nice, and I took very nice pictures of Notre Dame empty. Like there was no one at that time. It was beautiful with the pigeons. By the way, the camera that I had at that time worked with film and it was not properly placed so those pictures were taken but they do not exist because the film was how do you say it in english um overexposed with light so there was no picture uh and behind me be, like right in front of notre dame there is a police station and it was 6 30 and i saw that the boss was gonna stop there around 8 i think so i was just waiting doing absolutely nothing but look around in the meantime until I realized that I needed to go to the bathroom. And it was around 7, so it was still kind of a long wait until the bus came. I went close to Notre Dame trying to find public restroom somewhere and I couldn't find anything. The only thing that said something about restrooms was a staircase that went down to a parking lot and you had to put coins on it to get in there. But it was not even to the restrooms, but to the parking lot. So whatever, I didn't have coins. So I went back to the bench. I'm a grown woman. I can hold it until I can find a restroom. Maybe not, I need to go. So I saw a couple of policemen uh, getting into the station. So I ran and I arrived and I was like, Espanol? Mm -mm. English? Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, toilet? Ah. And he left. Go talk to his partner. <laughs> it amuses me a lot 
that he was kind enough to do a huge effort to communicate with me and tell me what I needed. So he started with uh, like him, toilet, hotel. Okay, and it was like in that direction, should be an hotel, so maybe I can use the dress room there. Okay, and then he was like toilet. Uh, et du, mm -hmm. uh, toilet. Okay, merci. I did know how to say that. <laughs> so, as far as I understood, in the corner, two blocks in that direction, there was a toilet. So I started first with the hotel. I was hoping that the bathroom was going to be like super visible on the lobby area so that I didn't have to wander around or ask someone. But no, of course, there was someone right in the entrance and they asked me what I wanted. I just said toilet and they were like, uh, guest, guest. Uh, okay. So I turned to the second option and tried to go and find it, but I couldn't find anything. I saw many businesses that were preparing to get open, but not open yet. And I, uh, I asked a lady if I could use the toilet. No, 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 Cleon, Cleon. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I went back and uh, by that time Notre Dame was already open and I got in and I'm so glad because now it's all burned down. <laughs> but I did have the chance to look at everything inside before that happened. Um, so I went in there and I heard that they were actually performing mass and I was thinking, okay, I was so lucky yesterday that it didn't happen anything to me last night that I should thank God because God pointed me to the right direction where I was going to be safe. And of course, also San Michael Archangel. I was looking at the paintings and reached the place where I could see it and I started trying to hear mass, but it was in French and I couldn't understand anything. <laughs> So when I recognized that they were praying the Holy Father prayer, I made it and I thanked God with my whole heart and asked for forgiveness for not staying the whole mass, but I needed to catch that bus and I also needed to find a restroom. So I went back out and I saw the tour bus coming, so I hurried and I hopped on and I asked them if I could pay with my credit card with my American Express. They said, not here in the bus, but in the offices. And I was like, oh no, not again. And they were like, but don't worry, hop on. And when we get to the offices, we will let you know so that you can go pay. So I just went there and I was sightseeing everything and taking pictures until we reached the office and I paid for my ride and they gave me my bracelet again ask for a toilet and there they had none i ended up going to a cafe next door and because everybody just kept telling me that clients only as soon as i entered the cafe i asked the bartender coffee bar barista espanol he didn't answer but he took a menu and gave it to me and i saw that the menu was in spanish so i was like oh oh perfect i order a Café con leche, coffee with milk. And then after ordering, I asked where the bathroom was and I saw that I needed coins to get in there. And I was like, oh, come on, not again. I didn't need the coffee, I just needed money. It was so frustrating. I had to go back to the bar and I asked the guy, do you have coins? You can add it to my check. He was like, give me some coins. I went back, used the restroom. Finally, I have two things to say about that. First of all is that restrooms in Europe are super different from restrooms in Mexico. Every single time that I had to use a public restroom, I struggled to find the flushing system. Sometimes it was like a button in the floor, sometimes it was a square in the wall that you had to sometimes push, sometimes turn. Okay, the first adventure is how do I flush the toilet? <laughs> it was crazy. And the second is that when I came back to the bar for getting my coffee, he put right in front of me a little tiny espresso cup of coffee next to a little jar full to the top with milk. And there was like no other cup where I could mix them. Uh, I just couldn't figure it out. 
I ended up drinking a little bit of the milk from the jar so that I could pass a little bit of coffee to the jar only until I... How are you supposed to drink that? <laughs> the rest of the day in Paris was just nice. I saw the Tour Eiffel, the Arch of Triumph, and I saw so many other gorgeous buildings. It was just beautiful, but the, the night and morning adventures were definitely out of my comfort zone. So I went back to London, right? Because I still had some days left there. And I wanted to go to the theater. They were playing The Lion King, and it was 60 pounds, the cheapest ticket. And I was like, geez, that's a lot of money. So I ended up going to a different play. It was called Stump, and it was only 10 pounds. Everything else was just uneventful for the rest of the journey in London until I had to go back home. I was supposed to go back home and two or three days after I arrived, I was going to start social service for a university. It was like a super tight schedule. The night before I have to go, the German girl, Beto's girlfriend, asked me, at what time do you have to be at the airport tomorrow? I was like, oh, 5.30. Oh, ooh, it's super early. How do you plan on getting there? Oh, by subway. Ah, uh, but the subway is not working at that time. Oh. And they were like, but maybe you can leave in the last train and sleep there and, you know. Oh no, the last train already passed. Oh, so what can I do? Can I get a taxi or something? Yes, you can, but it's actually quite pricey. I have no other way. I have to get there. <sighs> Guess how much was the taxi from Beto's place to the airport? 60 pounds. <laughs> I should have gone to the theater and planned my way back to the airport with time. I should have asked. I didn't know. It didn't even cross my mind <laughs> to pay attention to that pretty little tiny detail. So I went to the check-in counter and told the girl that I wanted to sign myself in the standby list. And she was like, oh, okay, for which flight? Oh, for this flight. Okay, perfect. Do you want to sign yourself in only that flight or in another one? I was like... Do you think it's necessary? Well, yes. You see, another airline uh, went on a strike during that time. And as I mentioned before, there was a lot of people going back home from the World Cup. And um, the airline where my uncle worked was covering for most of Iberia's flights. So if the flights were already fully booked with Iberia's strike, they were overbooked. And the girl told me that there were approximately 27 people above me on the waiting list. I realized it was going to be super hard to get on time to Mexico. And I asked her, how many people from the waiting list is actually leaving per day? She was like, there are seven flights to US, different destinations. If anyone gets on the plane from the waiting list, it's only one or two. So I knew that I was not going to make it on time for my social service and I needed to contact everybody to let them know that. So once inside, I found these stations where you could access internet for 10 minutes for one pound. In that time, pounds were about 21, 22 pesos. And uh, here in Mexico, you could go to a cyber cafe and use the computer for one hour for 10 pesos. <laughs> So that was kind of really expensive. Throw in my pound and started emailing everyone. The social service coordinator, my coordinator at the university, and of course, my parents. Let them know that there was a lot of people waiting so that it would take probably more than a couple days. After that, I figured that I needed to check my food options because I paid 60 pounds on the taxi, so I didn't have much cash left. 11 pounds. Oof, that's not a lot. So I walked around and saw that there was only one restaurant in that terminal. And the cheapest thing that you could find on the menu was like 10 pounds. So I had to check other options. I found some sandwiches at a drugstore. They were one pound and a half. So I bought one and I tasted it and throw it away. 
I don't know, for my taste, it was the most disgusting thing ever. So knowing that I didn't have money, I threw it away. I didn't know exactly how things were gonna go. So I went on the first waiting gate and then to the next one and then to the next one. And then at the end of the day, I still was there. So I decided not to go back to Beto's place because that was a ridiculous spend of money. So I slept on the airport. In one of the benches, I found a place where I could uh, be. There was a police guy nearby and there were no big speakers or anything around. So it kind of seemed quiet. I figured a position and a way of getting my things so that if anyone tried to steal them, I would feel it and wake up. And in the morning, I went to the bathroom and fresh enough, you know, wash my face. When a mom and a daughter approached me and she was like, you are on the waiting list for it, for this airline, right? Did you sleep here on the airport? Guilty. Yeah, we saw you yesterday on the waiting list. We are on the standby too, but we did go to a hotel. I was like, well, I can't afford that. So I slept here. You had to do the same in every single flight. Kind of a check for assistance. <laughs> And see if someone was had left or not and at the end of the boarding time move to the next one and to the next one and to the next one. and at the end of the day again i was still there and the mom and the daughter were too the mom approached me they still had a hotel room because her son was gonna stay there and go on a tour with some other people around Europe. And they asked me if I wanted to stay with them because she was worried about me staying alone in the airport. And I didn't even think twice. I was like, yes, thank you. I, I will stay with you. <laughs> so we went to the hotel and the mom and the daughter slept in one bed and I slept on the other and the poor guy had to sleep on the floor. <laughs> But they were very nice. Next day, we went back to the airport. And at some point during the day, they approached me and the mom told me, you know, we decided not to keep waiting on the waiting list. It's just too stressful. So we went ahead and bought regular tickets and we're going back home with another airline. Why don't you do that? I, I can't afford that. For us, paying one ticket to Europe was already an effort. Paying another ticket was just not gonna cut it so they left and i stayed there for one more night there was a couple guys that i was also hanging out a lot it was a very cute guy and a girl that was uh super cool and fun and we were kind of going to all the places together the three of us so i haven't told you anything more about the food i come up with an idea for keeping my stomach quiet and kind of pass by because I couldn't really afford food food the sandwiches were horrible and everything that I had access to was chips and chocolates and stuff so I bought a gigantic bar of Cadbury chocolate I thought every time that I get hungry I will just grab one or two pieces of chocolate so that my stomach is gonna be kind of full and I can hang out for a little while but I was hungry most of the time and at one point we were sitting the three of us and my stomach started like in the most horrible way and the cute guy was like do you want an apple do you have an apple i wouldn't be offering you an apple if i didn't have an apple of course sorry i do want an apple thank you I felt so bad. It was ridiculous. Like my reaction was like so exaggerated and like desperate. It was embarrassing. <laughs> Not only because I liked the guy, but it was embarrassing, period. And the girl that was with us, uh, she had gone somewhere and she came back with a couple bags and cro with croissants. She gave me one and she gave the other one to the guy. I took it and he said, no, thank you. Give it to her. She needs it more. Oh. I never felt more embarrassed. One thing right after the other. I felt like I was a homeless, a beggar, but I, I was also aware of my situation. So I wasn't proud enough to say no. I knew that I needed that. So I was like, yes, thank you. <laughs> Knowing that I was gonna need it later. So uh, not having cash was 
bad. And the problem is that most of the businesses didn't take American Express. American Express is not a card where you can just go to an ATM and withdraw some money, but it was what it was. So and I, we used to joke that we were on the movie The Terminal, you know, the Tom Hanks one. <laughs> that day the girl, and it was a Thursday, so she checked on the system and she was like, guys, everything is on red from today until Tuesday and Tuesday it turns orange and then Wednesday goes back to red and the other guy he was like yeah you know I, I will just go back to my friend's house and I will come back on Tuesday and see how it goes but Beto didn't know that I hadn't lived yet because in those 10 minutes of expensive internet I didn't send him an email because I was not planning to go back to his place but I did go back to his place and explained to him I'm still here <laughs> but uh, he allowed me to go home from his house expensive at that time cellulars didn't work in other countries so easily back then I didn't have any other way of contacting my family it's not like today that as far as you have Wi-Fi you are completely communicated no 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 it was another time <laughs> So when, once I was there, my family uh, deposited some money to his account and he went to an ATM and withdrew it so that I would have some more money. So I stayed there. Saturday night, I decided to take the last subway to go back to the airport and start trying again on Sunday. Again, I didn't know when I was going to have the chance to get away, but I remember I bought some food that I could take with me to the airport. So I arrived there. And I started again going to every single flight that I could try. One time they were checking my luggage and one of the guys that was doing it was like, I think I know you. You've been around here for quite a while, right? Yeah, this is my fourth day. I've been a few days here on the waiting list. Well, don't worry. If you don't make it today, at the end of the day, I can take you for dinner. Jeez, that was scary for me. I was like, I don't know you. You're not even supposed to know that I exist. You're not even supposed to remember me because I'm not supposed to spend that much time in the airport. <laughs> I just want to go home. I don't want to go dinner with you. I don't want to see you ever again. <laughs> so again, I asked St. Michael Archangel to help me out. Lucky me, St. Michael did it again. And I got a place on that plane and went to Washington. Once I arrived to Washington, I was so already feeling so much better because I was way closer to home. So I started checking uh, where the counter was and I approached the counter and I asked for getting on the waiting list for Mexico's flight. And they're like, oh, but we only have one flight from Mexico and that left uh, an hour ago. Oh no, again. It was like, don't worry, I'll put you on the list for the flight of tomorrow. Next day, I did eat. I remember that I went to a Wendy's and I ordered a burger. Because in, in United States, they accept American Express almost everywhere. And, and they had many more places to go find food. So I was so happy to have a decent meal. Also, I don't know, I guess it was my parents who let know my uncle that I didn't make it. But I remember that I, I got an announcement that I had a call and to approach gate number something. So I went to the gate and it was my uncle. He called to the airport and he was like, hey, I wanted to let you know, if you want, you can try to San Francisco. I will pay for that. Don't worry. You come stay with us a couple weeks. You have been through hell from the for the last few days. So come stay with us. You already missed your social service. Okay, I'll try. So during the day, I was trying to get to San Francisco, uh, but I didn't make it. Everybody was coming from Europe, but I did make it in the Mexico flight. So I was already happy to be going home. So I arrived to uh, Mexico's airport and I did have some Mexican money. So the first thing that I did was call my mom. Mom, I'm in Mexico, finally. Oh. I arrived to the house and I saw my mom and she hugged me and I started crying. Oh, mommy. <laughs> I just couldn't handle it anymore. It was like, I can finally stop being strong, independent, put together. I could finally just break down and cry. 
all the stress, all the mortification, all the fear. It was quite an experience. It was a little bit nightmarish, but I did learn a lot. I think I wouldn't change anything. I, I find out that I was way stronger than I thought, that I could keep a cold mind so that I could solve any kind of trouble that I saw. It was stressful as hell, but it was a building character experience, you know, like I came back completely changed. I, I was just different. I felt a new confidence and a new strength and power within me that I didn't know was there until I was put to the test. That was only my first time traveling by myself because I found it incredible. I learned a lot. I went to the places that I wanted to go. I ate whatever I wanted to eat. I bought whatever I wanted to buy. I expended as much as I wanted in whatever I wanted. And there was absolutely no one to criticize me, no one to tell me, you shouldn't do that, or you should better do this or that. It was so fulfilling to have full control of what you do, when you do it. It was just great, but it was for sure a live test. And uh, I would say that I passed. I would like to think that with flying colors because there were so many things that could have happened to me and they didn't. And I'm so grateful for that. And well, that was the story of my crazy London and Paris adventure. Let me know what you think about it. What do you think would have been something that you probably wouldn't have been able to handle? Or let me know one adventure that you went on that went sideways and you learned a lot from it. Traveling by yourself is definitely one of the best things that you can do in life for sure. So thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing your adventures with me in the comments down below. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Your likes, your comments and your subscriptions are really, really helping me out a lot. Special thanks to my friend Nico because he decided he wanted to support my channel and he used the link on the description for buy me a coffee and he bought me a drink toasting with a delicious añejo. So cheers, Nico. So once again, thank you for watching and hearing my crazy stories and see you next week. Bye.